You know, I'm a Palestinian and I'm an Arab, and many times this is very confusing to many Americans who do not know. Uh, so they think immediately that I must, if I'm an Arab, I must have been a Muslim, and then maybe an American missionary came and uh, we got converted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I want to thank the missionaries, you know. <laughs> And then I have to remind them where Jesus was born. <laughs> and sometimes I wonder whether people think that Jesus was born in Beth Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Yeah. You know, you know. So I have to say, you know, Bethlehem, Palestine. These people here are from Bethlehem, Palestine. Um, and so our Christian faith goes back to the early Christian centuries and to apostolic times. Um, and, um, uh, and, and that's very important for us. So we, we, are, we continue to be witnesses for, for Christ in our land. Although the Christian community now is very small, very tiny. Uh, I always tell people that uh, by the end of the fourth century, Palestine had become a totally Christian country. And we went down from a predominantly Christian country uh, to now less than 2% of the population. And there are many different factors over the last 2,000 years that influence the decrease of the Palestinian Christian community. But we're still there, and we still um, witness for our faith um, uh, in the country, and especially for justice and peace. Now, for most of my ministry, I worked in the different uh, Episcopal or Anglican churches in the country, in Galilee and then in Jerusalem for a good number of years. And while in Jerusalem, uh, Sabil came into being. Sabil is a grassroots ecumenical organization. It's not really affiliated with any one denomination, but it is uh, totally ecumenical. And back home, when I say ecumenical, I mean that um, we work with all the Christian community of the land. Now, the largest Christian community of the land is the Orthodox and the Melkites. And the Melkites, 300 years ago, were one church with the Orthodox. So they split in 17, 17 23, 24, something like that. So, uh, so the, the largest number of the Christians are the Orthodox or the Melkite church. Melkites are the Greek Catholics. And then we have a number of Orthodox churches in the land, and we have a number of Catholic churches in the land. Um, and then we have few Protestants. We don't have as many uh, Protestants as you have in this country. Um, especially, we don't have the more evangelical uh, groups you know, that you have. Uh, we have basically the two large, larger uh, uh, Protestant denominations would be the Episcopalians and the Lutherans, but there are few also Baptist and few other uh, evangelical churches. And so Sabil came into being as an ecumenical organization, and we work with all the Christians of the land, uh, trying to build up the body of Christ, the small community, and especially to help, to help the Christians rise above denominationalism because denominations today with small number of people doesn't make much sense uh, we are fragmented we are weak and so it makes more sense if we are living together and working together and witnessing together ecumenically and that's we have a big uh, a program uh, within Sabil uh, uh, doing, doing this uh, very thing now, the word Sabil is very significant, uh, and I hope you'll remember it. It, is, it means the way in Arabic, and, and it's found also in the Quran, it's found in the Bible, um, and actually, as the Christians of you here know, that the early Christian community of the land were known as the people of the way. That's the earliest name for the Christians, long before we were divided into denominations. So we were 
people who followed the one who said, I am the way, Jesus Christ. And so, uh, Sabil is the way or the path. It's also found in Hebrew. Uh, so it, it can bring us all together in that sense because it's a word that uh, makes us think that we are walking together on the way, the way for justice, the way for, for truth, the way for peace, the way for reconciliation. So this is part of the work of Sabil. But Sabil doesn't only work with the Christian community. It works with the Muslim community. And I'm very glad to see uh, Muslims uh, with us also here. Because one of, the, one of the programs that we have now with the Muslim community is to bring Christian clergy and Muslim uh, sheikhs, the head of the, of the Muslim community, together. And we're doing it regionally. Uh, we started in Jericho with a big conference, uh, Christians and Muslims. Uh, we, and then we had regional conferences. We started in the Bethlehem, Beit Sahur, Beit Jala uh, community there. And uh, recently we did one in Galilee, in Nazareth. So what we do, we bring the Christian clergy and the Muslim clergy, in that sense, to get to know each other. Because sometimes, because of the occupation, um, um, and the policy, I think, of Israel to divide and rule, we have extremists and we have problems in our community. And uh, it's important that we build friendship so that the sheikh and the priest or the pastor, uh, knowing each other, they can immediately rally and they can try to deal with the problem within the community. And it's wonderful. I mean, it's opening up a new vista for us you know, between the, the Muslim and the, and the Christian community. You have to remember that Christians and Muslims are not ethnically different. You know, Palestinian Christians and Palestinian Muslims are ethnically the same. We are all uh, one community. We just happen to be two religions in that sense. Um, and, um, and so we work with the, with the Muslim community, and Sabil enjoys very good relations with the Mufti, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem. In fact, two years ago, I was with the Mufti on a visit to Denmark. And so he and I were there, uh, and we were speaking in different places in Denmark, especially after all, the, um, all those uh, um, cartoons that came out you know, against the Prophet uh, Muhammad. And so we were there trying to really help people there. So good relations is very, very important. And thirdly, we work with, uh, in, in Sabil, we work on justice and peace. And this is a big program for us. Uh, and um, uh, and uh, now we have friends of Sabil. And actually, we have with us uh, this evening the coordinator of Friends of Sabil in the United States. And I'd like uh, Dick Tolt just to stand so that you will recognize him. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Dick, for example, the last seven years, seven and a half years, organized 32 regional conferences in the States, in the United States, 32. We just came, uh, over a week ago, we came from St. Paul, Minneapolis, for our 32nd regional conference. We had about 250 people uh, at Luther Seminary in St. Paul, and Mark, Braverman was with us. He was one of the speakers also. Um, so, and so on the justice issue, we do not only work with Muslims, we also work with Jews. Israeli Jews, American Jews, all people who are willing to stand for justice and for peace. And we thank God for these uh, conferences and, uh, and the work for justice because we believe that it is... Uh, uh, it is a mandate for us, uh, working for justice and peace. But we always say that justice is not the end of the road for us. It's the basis. We must begin with justice. Uh, but we believe that ultimately we have to work for reconciliation. But we cannot really work for reconciliation now when then there is so much oppression. And recently, 
back home, uh, the, the Christian community, a group of us, bishops, clergy, women, men, we worked for one and a half years to produce uh, this um, document that I am uh, holding up for you now, this, the Kairos Palestine document. And I think we have copies. Do we have copies here? Yeah. And some of you have it already. Please take the time and read it, because then you will discover what the Palestinian Christian communities, community is saying. We, we were an ecumenical committee or ecumenical group from the Orthodox, from the Catholic, from the Protestants. We all work together and we produce this. And I want to, in the last few minutes that I have, just lift up, at least maybe stimulate your thinking about this document. So I'd just like to, to lift up a few points uh, from, the, from the document. So um, we say in the document, theologically, we say, we believe in one God, creator of the universe and humanity. We believe in a good and just God, who loves each one of God's creatures. We believe that every human being is created in God's image and likeness and that everyone's dignity is derived from the dignity of the Almighty One. This is very important. So it's a basic, theological, simple, very simple, straightforward and clear. And then we talk about the situation on the ground, back home, the reality, and we say, uh, Israeli settlements ravage our land in the name of God. Reality is the daily humiliation to which we are subjected at the military checkpoints. Reality is the separation between members of the same family. Religious liberty is severely restricted. Most Palestinians, Christians and Muslims, cannot get to Jerusalem, cannot worship in their holy places. And yet Israel brags that it's a democracy and it, uh, 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 it's open and it, freedom of religion and all of this. But that's, that's the reality there. Um, so another point, this document says very clearly that the occupation is evil and sin and it must be resisted. But then we say um, that um, we, we ask our American Christians and, and some other Christians, especially extremists in this country and Christian Zionists, we say don't use the Bible to legitimize or support injustice. When people, use, when people use the Bible to justify injustice, they transform religion into human ideology and strip the word of God of its holiness, its universality and truth. We reject that. We also in the document say we are not against Israel and we are not against the Jewish people. We are against the injustice. We are the, against the injustice of the government that refuses to do justice and to make peace and refuses to implement international law. It's very important. And so when we talk about resistance, we say resistance is a right and a duty for the Christian, but it is resistance with love as its logic. It is a creative resistance, for it must find human ways that engage the humanity of the enemy, seeing the image of God in the face of the enemy. Christ our Lord has left us an example we must imitate. We must resist evil, but he taught us that we cannot resist evil with evil. The Kairos Palestine talks about the humanity of the enemy. So important to remember that in spite of all the injustice, that you're really dealing with a human being. And so there is so much in this document. I don't want to 
say mo much more because I would like you to read it and to study it. And you know, the Presbyterian Church in the, uh, in the United States here uh, are um, working now on a study um, guide, study guide for this document. And so if you are Presbyterian or if you have Presbyterian friends, the study guide I think will come out next month. Um, so please get, get it because it will help you uh, very much in your, in your study. So I want to end by inviting you to come to Jerusalem and to, uh, to Bethlehem. Because Sabil, uh, every two, three years, uh, conducts a big conference. Our eighth international conference will take place next February uh, in Bethlehem, uh, at the Bethlehem Hotel. Uh, we used to have these conferences in Jerusalem, but Jerusalem is becoming very, very expensive. And so we are going to have it uh, in, in Bethlehem. Um, and we are going, the, the theme of the conference is going to be a challenging empire, God, faithfulness and resistance. And are there uh, brochures? There are brochures outside. Uh, Dick is holding a brochure in his hand. Yeah. Um, God, faithfulness and resistance. And if you have not been to, uh, to Bethlehem, if you have not been to the Holy Land, we would love for you to come. Um, and you know, most of the people who have done the research on and, 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 and uh, published books on, the, on empire are Americans because they rec recognize they're living under empire. Yeah. And so some of them will be with us. And um, it's going to be an amazing, an amazing conference. So I would like to welcome you as you have uh, kindly welcomed me here. I'd like to welcome you in Bethlehem. So come and see us.